but it was a disaster. It was a 110 degree sun mm -hmm. with fighting scrub oak and rotten rock, and it was it was a nightmare. It was horrible. I hated it so much that I decided not to climb for a long time. And before you came here, did you know anything at all about Red Rock? Or when did you no, know? No, actually, I knew that Las Vegas was 10 hours from Yosemite. And that was it. And I knew that I could survive if I was 10 hours from Yosemite. So you figured, you actually at the time knew almost nothing about Red Rock? Or nothing about nothing. Red Rock? Nothing. Red Rock did not exist as a climbing area. And when you first got exposed to Olson, what was the feeling? I mean, did it seem imposing? Did it seem... Well, I, I, at that point I had um, an eating disorder. <laughs> 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 I, had, I, I would uh, sometimes gorge on food in order to decrease anxiety. So when I saw, when I saw Mo Wilson, I knew I had to make a run to town and, and take out on donuts. <laughs> So you started climbing originally with George, and... Uh, well, actually, I started climbing with him in my freshman year at Cornell, and it was ice climbing. Right. And I started ice climbing because, well, the rock climbing season kind of ended in October because of the weather. So we started ice climbing on the waterfalls in Ithaca and the Finger Lakes, and went up to Mount Washington to ice climb the gullies. That were, like. I don't know, 800 foot gullies there, which had water ice. And uh, also horrendous weather, 110 mile an hour winds and things like that. That sounds like Mount Washington. So we could make believe we were in the high mountains. We, we were always doing this in, as practice for the Andes or Alaska or something. Oh, good. A high adventure. Coming to Red Rock, was, was very frustrating. I couldn't deal with the weather. It was very hot, or too cold, or too windy, or just too brushy, or not enough, um, the, not enough crack systems, or obvious crack systems. So it was, it was a frustrating experience, Red Rock. When did you beginning. first start loving it? Well, I started loving it kind of, I, I'm trying to remember the years, but it must have been something like 1977 to 78. Um, Cat in the Hat, some climbs at Oak Creek Canyon. And at that point we put up ep epinephrine. And in order to do it, we fixed lines and we bolted, we started bolting the upper pitches. And that was a turning point. And after that it was bolt, boltathons. <laughs> Did that make you so much for Santa Nagrata among some of the climbers? Or? Completely. It but was, you had so much fun anyway? It was anyway? horrifying. It was horrifying to the climbing community. And we were very evil. But mostly we were secret, so we didn't get too much flack. <laughs> now, I was kind of curious. You know, when you first went out there, you saw some... You were at the same spot with the same rocks. And in the beginning, those rocks seemed intimidating, even overwhelming. They seemed non-existent. I mean, as, as I gained more experience in Red Rock, the routes would jump out at you. Uh, they were invisible in the beginning. And that's, that's the fascinating part of being here. And it actually continues, <laughs> it continues to this day where you go and see the same landscape and new things jump out at you. Did you feel that sometimes that same way on some of your climbs, where you've had to succeed, your survival depended on it? We always do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's why I like long climbs in adventure settings. Because it's not part of the imagination. You actually put yourself in a position where you need to perform or, or you're in trouble. Some of the more difficult routes like Nightcrawler, did you, what kind of apprehensions did you have? Well, Tom filmed me on Nightcrawler just a couple weeks ago. I felt a lot of apprehension, especially when Tom called me up in the morning saying that his car had been vandalized. I thought that this was a bad omen, and I thought, oh God, this is, you know, this day is not going to be right. And I felt quite a bit of anxiety. But I decided that I'm just going to go ahead, hike in there, and do what I can do. As soon as I started touching that rock, it felt great. For some reason, it just felt really, really good.
Yeah. Not too bad today. So far. It'll be okay. that fear had driven a lot of your joy of climbing, that getting up in the morning and having apprehension and the night before. Tell me a little about that and the spirit you have when you overcome those fears. Um, I think for me personally, to have fear and then to resolve the fear through action generates euphoria. And I don't see any way to get that euphoria unless you have some fear to begin with. Going back to Red Rock, when you were uh, putting up routes and you were almost like, you were out of the mainstream, you were kind of secret. Secret. Out of the mainstream, definitely. And then you did your, your guide and you started getting some notoriety. Did it take a while or did people start reading your book or giving well, you a book? It was an interesting thing because the, the guidebook was published in 1984. Uh -huh. So uh, in 1985 it started getting circulated, but in 1985 I became pregnant. And you published your guide, you had Susie. Did you, how long was it before you got back into climbing? I was thinking and planning to climb very soon, but some some mothering instincts clicked in, <laughs> uh -huh. and I didn't. I did not climb. For about how long? Ten okay. years. So the first ten years of Susie pretty much didn't climb? Didn't climb. Okay. And you, your guide was out already, and it was starting to get some notoriety? Right. And then apparently uh, my public image changed from being despicable to being praiseworthy. Oh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how different phases of your life today and different influences in your life today affect the routes that you do today and how the routes you do actually affect your life. Because you got back in the climbing stronger okay. for the last few I'm years. I'm not putting up first ascents right now. Right. But the I did have a few years where I was out of climbing, several knee surgeries, a lot of recuperation, uh, very slow. So after, I didn't know how much climbing or even hiking I could do after that. So th all of this has been a huge source of enjoyment for me. so many bolts? I didn't even answer the question. I didn't even pose the question to myself. You just didn't, it wasn't a, an issue for you at all. It was who you... Well, actually, I take it back. I posed the question, when there was a crack, I didn't want a bolt placed. Uh -huh. When there was a face that did not have cracks, I thought it would be beautiful to climb it 
and I thought the bolts were appropriate. But as time has gone on, I feel more and more comfortable with bolts. And I don't agonize over either placing them or seeing them. I'm at the crazy spot. Climbing, it's still climbing, still fulfills your life and helps. Yeah, fill. and it, it it really seems to attract really wonderful people. Do you feel actually after thirty years even? Do you feel a certain freedom and adventure even today that you had thirty years ago, or more? It's a different kind of freedom. Tell me about it. It's a less of a compulsion and more of a joy. Does it influence you in your daily life now? I mean, a good weekend, a good trip. A yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy all the time. Almost all the time. <laughs> so you're saying that climbing is really one of the things that helps fulfill your life, give you energy in the rest of your, your yeah. days. Gives me a lot of energy and goodwill, which drives me to share with other people. Has that even influenced the last three years how you get along with your kids? As you did more climbing, is it actually... Uh, excellent. Huh? It has been excellent. Actually, there might be a direct correlation between my climbing and my good, my good relationships with my kids. If you were to plot them on a graph, they would probably <laughs> coincide. Mostly, climbing is a venue and people are the... Friendships are the, the actual source of satisfaction. George, you want to watch it? Yeah, I'll watch it. Is that the second pitch? Yes, that is the second pitch. That's really neat. I think I'll get a picture of you. Just like that. Oh. You look good.